in the past, around the second century of our current era, some Buddhist monks found a special and unique sacred place hidden inside the womb of the mountains on the bank of Haro River, whose water comes directly from the snow of the Himalaya. These monks probably came from the ancient school and university of Takshila, today the very busy city of Takshila in the Indus Valley, northeast of Pakistan. The name of this city means City of Cut Stones, and still today along the road you can find many stone masons and sculptures, and this was the greatest center for higher education in India in Buddhist times. In those times, monks were able to listen deeply the energy of nature and cosmos. Some of them had already built a monastery into the main valley. Today it is called Jaulian Monastery. But Jaulian is a new name given improperly by British people. The original local name is Javalia, that means the seat of saints. Maybe the first monastery was too much close to the city of Takshila, or maybe the flux of monks was very high in that time, coming from China and Asia. So some monks went deeply inside the valley, following the Haro River, until they found a place of great energy and power, a huge high solid rock on the bank of the river, just where the river Haro opens and creates the valley. In these ancient green mountains, many prehistoric caves were found too. And here, in many years of meditation and peace, listening to the clear and lively voice of the water, they built their huge stupa and founded their new monastery. They called it the center of the world, Bamala, the place of light, the place of splendor, the place of enlightenment. The word Bama in Sanskrit means light, brightness, giving the name at this sacred place. Stupa is a sacred monument with a powerful symbol and function of transformation. It is the symbol of the mind and it is a huge antenna collecting and spreading energy all around. The shape of a stupa is pyramidal, guiding our soul towards spiritual liberation from the material world towards pure light. In fact, it is composed of a large base solidly resting on the ground, which gradually becomes more and more thin towards the sky, through steps and changes of, of level. The base, usually square, represents the earth element. Then gradually the stupa rises, taking the round shapes of the water element, the acute soaring and dancing shapes of the fire element, the increasing subtle forms of air, and therefore the invisible forms of the ether symbolized by the solar disk, often combined with the lunar one. The pyramid shape is a shape capable of conveying large amount of energy from the cosmos. As all the ancients knew very, very well, and probably the Buddhists themselves built the first stupas on the model of previous pyramidal monuments. The stupa of Bamala, however, has a unique feature the base has a cross shape, which even better represents the symbol of the earth, the number four. 
the stability, the four cardinal directions. It looks so similar to an Aztec pyramid. It is so incredible. Stupas of this kind can be found only in the Kashmir area, from which it is possible that the monks came, bringing back their own traditions. As I walk through these places, I imagine the fine work to prepare the thousands and thousands of stones that went into erecting the stupa. When we choose, like Buddhist monks made and still nowadays make, to withdraw from everyday life, to devote ourselves to spiritual liberation, our action is all turned inside. Only folding the senses in words, we can find the true space, the true freedom, and we can be guided towards enlightenment. Then the act of erecting the stupa becomes a symbolic gesture, the gesture of the mind that becomes more and more subtle. By erecting the stupa, monks realized a double meaning, external and internal. They built their own inner freedom together with the freedom of our planet Earth. By carefully observing the characteristics of the place, it is clear that the entire site was once covered by river debris. The part facing downstream of the monastery, protected by the mass of the stupa, is in fact in much better conditions. The statues in the niches are still intact even today, if compared instead to the back. And everywhere in the site there are numerous stones with a typical shape smoothed by the water of the river. So what happened to Bamala? A huge flood of the river must have occurred at one point. During a rapid climate change, the snows of the Himalaya must have melted very quickly creating a great, immense wave of flood of the Haro River, which must have buried the entire complex of the monastery. Perhaps only the top of the stupa emerged from the mud. The building skill of the monks is incredible for us today. As for the most of the ancient monuments, today we would not know how to reproduce such a mastery in building monuments or palaces. Mastery derived from deep knowledge and study of stone. If we observe the walls of the stupa, and the monastery of Bamala, we find the same construction style of all the Buddhist monasteries of the first century in Pakistan. The walls are composed of large stones surrounded by small, small stones embedded in a precise, extremely way. The small stones allowed to contain and safeguard the structure from landslides and oscillations. So in that time, monks were able to contain the damaging effects of earthquakes, and these walls have also survived the devastating power of the water of the river. After the flood, the river must have slowly, slowly dug out its way amidst the stones. And Sir Sufyan Malik and Sir John Marshall began excavating this site in 1930 and even today the entire site is under study and excavation. It is nominated at UNESCO World Heritage Site since 
it is one of the best preserved sites in the Taxila Valley. Around the great mother stupa, as happened in every Buddhist monastery, there were numerous small, votive little stupas. 19 were found. In 2016, a huge statue of about 15 meters in high was also found in Bamala representing the death of the Buddha on the physical plane, which Buddhists call Mahaparinirvana, dating back to 1,700 years ago. The findings of sacred and everyday objects testify to an active and lively community. So many pilgrims probably arrived who honor this place. On the back of the stupa, there is the monastery area, unfortunately and most completely swept away by the flood of the river. As in other Buddhist monasteries, we can see the large basin for collecting water, where the monks did their ablutions and washed themselves in a covered room. We can see the monk cells with small niches for the little candles. The kitchen and the large meeting room where monks used to listen to the Dharma teachings have collapsed. On the other side, instead, protected by the stupa, facing the sunset, there are wonderful small votive statues of the Buddha, which the sunlight reverberates with wonderful colors in the clear winter sky of Pakistan. There is also a large stone mill left, used for the preparation of flour. In this wonderful silence, walking through the monastery, we remember about monastic communities and about Buddha's teachings. A disciplined mind brings happiness. With our thoughts, we make the world. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters if compared with what lies within us. If you light a lamp for somebody, it will also brighten your path. Taking refuge in the Buddha, we commit ourselves to our own capacity for freedom. Taking refuge in the Dharma, we bring the path of awakening to life. Taking refuge in the Sangha, the community, we acknowledge our interconnectedness. Yeah. <laughs>